in that Sunday afternoon game completed a three game sweep of this Reds ball club. He went seven innings of three run baseball. He struck out uh, four and walked four in that ball game. And really, how he goes oftentimes depend on how he controls that sinking fastball of his. In the air to center field, peering up into the bright sunshine behind home plate is Willie Tavares, and will haul it in. Estrubal Cabrera, the switch hitting leadoff hitter, is retired. A little bit of a change in the lineup for this Indians team. If you follow them over the years, Grady Sizemore has been the leadoff hitter. They're trying to get him on track. Uncomfortable territory for him. He's in at 213. But against the Reds, he's hit over 300 in his career. Sizemore, the left-hand swinger, is hitting in the number two spot. Victor Martinez has been outstanding all year. One of the best hitters in the American League. Sin Su Chu, Johnny Peralta, Mark DeRosa, the former National Leaguer, Garco, Francisco, and Reyes. That is one through nine. Your starting lineup for Eric Wedge, the former catcher out of the Boston Red Sox organization. Wedge, the manager of the Indians, 41 years of age, his seventh year of managing in Cleveland. A bright baseball man and a great communicator trying to find a way to communicate his club to the 500 level. They come in 16 and 26, eight and a half games back, Chris. Their bullpen has been a disaster so far. Well, they got off to a horrendous start, George, and having a bad bullpen will make it a bad road trip. Well, there's Sizemore. That's a big swing for the center fielder. He hits out a ton, and Bronson Arroyo has given up his 11th, now 12th home run of the season, and the Indians are off to a 1 0 lead. For Sizemore, that is the seventh home run he's hit against Cincinnati. And 15 runs batted in. They want to get him untracked in the number two spot, and he sure shows a way to do it. Well, the Indians are swinging on bats a lot better than they had been earlier in the year on this road trip. They've got their team batting average up over 300. And Grady Sizemore, who has been struggling this year, does not struggle with that swing. It's a fastball, it looks like, out over the plate. And boy, he is such a good player, good athlete, that you cannot beat him that kind of pitch. Very solid offensive and defensive player. Comes in at 213, but drills his eighth homer of the year, seventh in his career against Cincinnati. He's always hit well against the Reds in interleague competition. Sizemore, great high school athlete out of the state of Washington, originally signed by Montreal. He came over in the same deal that Brandon Phillips went from Montreal to Cleveland, along with Cliff Lee. Talk about a deal that was big time for the Indians organization at yeah, that time. I would say that was quite a one way deal. Wasn't that in the Bartolo Colon deal? Yep. All three of them weighed about the same at Bartolo, Bartolo Colon weighs yeah. now, right? <laughs> Here's Victor. Boy, you talk about off to a great start. This guy's been something else. He's behind the plate today. He'll catch and play first base. They've got to change the lineup a little bit with no designated hitter. Travis Hafner, who's been their big time left handed power bat, has been on the disabled list. They hope to get him back after this designated hitterless trek to the National League completes for the Indians. But they get Hafner back. That'll make their lineup that much better. But in the middle of not having him, this guy's been something else, Chris. Well, he's a guy, he's George, he's a guy that, you know, you figure one of these years is going to show up somewhere a different position than behind the plate because he hits well enough to be a, an infielder like a third baseman or a first baseman. Rosales smothers this and he'll tap the bat. Here's your Ford defensive alignment. You see Adam Rosales down at first. Joey Votto is cleared to play. He's available to pinch it tonight. He hopefully will be in the lineup no later than Sunday, possibly tomorrow. Next to Veras, Bruce in the outfield. Harrison, Gonzalez, Phillips, and Rosales across the infield. And Ramon Hernandez back behind the plate, catching Bronson Arroyo. That is your Ford defensive alignment. Good sight to see Joey Votto out on the field taking batting practice. And if you didn't get the final word from the doctor's report yesterday an inner ear infection was the final diagnosis of his dizzy spells. They took a battery of tests to rule out any possibility. So he feels better, swinging better. He was happy to be out on the ball field again today, Chris. And it's just nice to see a smile on his face again. Well, you know, George, I think he's relieved to know that it's nothing more serious than that. I mean, when you hear the word vertigo and it's you they're talking about, you got to be shaking in your boots because that's something that really never goes away, can only be somewhat controlled. But if you have an inner ear infection, you know, obviously they feel that they can take some medication and they can treat that and they can get rid of it and he'll be back to normal. That's Joey in the batting cage today. We'll hear from him a little bit later on on 
his clearance medically to get back playing baseball. But you take him out of the lineup, though, and, you know, you can't compare him with, you know, Albert Pujols, but he is the Reds' version of Albert Pujols as far as being the one solid guy in the lineup who plays against lefties and righties, and you need his power and his presence. Rosales scoops, Arroyo over, taps the bag. Indians take the lead. Grady Sizemore's eighth homer of the league of the season gives them a 1 0 lead. Here comes Tavares when we return. Indians for the first time. Gonzalez will hit in the eighth spot of Bronson Arroyo hits ninth. That is your starting lineup for Dusty Baker. And here's a guy who Reds fans have seen in a Cardinal uniform for the better part of the last five years. Well, he was drafted by the Cardinals. That was back in 2003 out of USC. George, that ring a bell to you as a former da, da, Trojan. Da, da, da. And he was traded to Cleveland, and he's had run upon a little hard times here so far. You see, they're under an average up around seven. Not a guy that has pitched especially deep into a ball game either. The deepest he has gone into any one ball game this year for Reyes is six innings. Well, Reyes with that flat brim cap ready to go to work. He came over midpoint of last year to the Indians. Had a great opening month with the Indians and had a little soreness in the elbow so they shut him down. Starts with a one and two record and an ERA of over eight against the Reds. Here's Tavares. Willie in his career one for three against this right hand tosser and first and third in tight. I mean they want to take away the bunt very clearly from Tavares. You can't get any tighter than Garco is at first and DeRosa is at third. Played umpire for today, Jeff Kellogg. Rob Drake is down at first. Mark Wagner's at second. And Tim Timmons is your third base umpire for this lid lifter of the three game set on this Memorial Day weekend in Cincinnati. Here's the 3 1. And there's ball four. Now the Reds will get a base runner pronto. The speedy Tavares heads down to first. And here's a peek at your four defensive alignment. The Indians in the American League. Sixth in the league in defense. They've committed 23 miscues compared to 30 for the Reds. Francisco, Goldbuck, Caliber in center with Sizemore, and Sinsu Chu in right. DeRosa, who can play all around the infield and the outfield, too, is at third. Peralta, who's been playing third, will play short because of the DH to get him in the lineup. As Trubal Cabrera, who's been playing short, moves to second, and Gark goes over at first with Victor Martinez behind the plate. That is your forward defensive alignment. Victor Martinez has thrown out only 14% of those who have tried to steal. You'd expect the Reds to exploit the running game in this series. And I would expect them to do it early on. You know, Reyes, you see how long he's holding the ball right there. The Indians pitchers have to resort to whatever tactic they can come up with just to try to hold the runners, upset the, the timing and the cadence of the runner at first base, and maybe help himself uh, by getting the hitter uh, a little anxious as well. But Martinez just not throwing the ball very well at all from behind the plate. And that's a good move by Tavares. You know, if you don't know a pitcher's move or it's been a little while since you've seen it, go ahead and get yourself a real big lead at first base, a one-way lead, assuming that he's going to come over there and you'll get a good look at what he does. A little bigger lead for Tavares. He's going. The pitch plunks Harrison in the back, and the Reds will have first and second. He had a big break, and the base was stolen, but Harrison... Even if he tried, couldn't get out of the way of that one. So a walk and a hit batter, and the Reds have two on. Nobody out here in the first. Yeah, I've not seen Anthony Reyes pitch yet this year, George, but he just doesn't look right at all. And the few pitches that we've seen him throw, talked about some elbow problems that he had had. He looked like he was pitching to Willie Tavares and pitching around him. Uh, on a 3-1 pitch, he bounced the ball in the dirt. I mean, you got to come a little closer than that when you're a big leaguer. Well, one thing that guy right there, Eric Wedge, wants to do is stay out of his bullpen. His bullpen has been nothing but trouble for him, and the Reds would love to get into the Indians' bullpen. We got a chance to take an early lead here with Bruce coming to the plate. Jay at 247, leading the Reds with 12 homers, 25 knocked in. I'm not sure if that hit the umpire's leg and not the catcher's leg. Had it gotten past the umpire, then both runners probably would have advanced. As it is, the Indians get a break. Take a look. Jeff, Jeff Kellogg gets an assist right here. Uh, that would have been a second and third with nobody out. Instead, it's an ouch to Kellogg. 
One ball to Jay. That's a little low. Brandon Phillips, who's been the hottest red, is on deck. And Brandon has had some success against Reyes. He's three for seven and a homer against Reyes. Two and oh. Not even come close. Yeah, Victor Martinez looking over into the dugout like, hey, what should we do right here? Carl, Carl Willis, the pitching coach, is the same kind of look on his face as Eric Wedge talks to him. Three and oh. Talk a lot about starting the game the right way, Chris, with first pitch strikes. Not so far here, huh? He's only thrown one strike out of nine. That's not a Tom Browning method of success, is it? And it's nobody's method of success. That's ball four. A walk, a hit batter, and another walk. That'll get Willis off his bench and take a trek out to talk to his right hander. There's Joel Skinner, one of the coaches on this. Indians club the Indians have Eric Wedge the manager Carl Willis is the pitching coach Skinner's your third base coach Louis Rivera is down at third Derek Shelton the hitting coach and Jeff Datz is the bench coach a staff that's been together for a long time a little bit of a pep talk take a breather but early on Chris not the same mechanics not the same look not the same feel that we've seen off Anthony Reyes when he was a Cardinal really his mechanics look very complicated tonight George it looks like he's turning one way and twisting another and he's got a lot of excess movement and unless you're a really gifted athlete in a groove the more complicated your delivery is the fewer times you're going to be able to repeat it and throw strikes I think that's part of his problem right now. Well, Dusty Baker couldn't ask for anything better than this. Here comes Brandon Phillips, whose average is up to 275. He now leads the club with 33 runs batted in. Half of those runs batted in have come in the last week and a half. That's how hot he's been. Well, he ought to be looking up there for the first pitch down Broadway and let it rip. Don't stand up there looking for a walk. He should come out of that on deck circle ready to swing the bat on the first one he sees if it's good. Base is loaded, no one out. Bottom of the first. And that's low. Middle of the infield, double play depth for the Indians. They'll give up a run to try to get two. Just looks like Reyes has no confidence in any of his stuff at all. He's just trying to feather everything, making every pitch he makes a perfect pitch. At some point, you've got to rear back and say, here it is. One ball. He's struggling to throw strikes, struggling to find his comfort zone here in the first, and he's behind again, 2-0. Oh. Now, we may find out later there's something physically wrong with him, George, but I'll tell you, it's been a long time since we've seen a major league pitcher go out there really have no idea, and he's got no idea right now where that ball's going. There's action already in the bullpen for the Indians. Two balls, no strikes. Phillips digs in. That's in the dirt. Uh, Chris, after watching Anthony Reyes the last four plus years, I mean, he just doesn't look right. He doesn't look physically right. Jensen Lewis up and loosening. The right hander in the bullpen for the Indians. Well, however bad he looks, George, I bet he feels worse. And he will soon feel worse than that. 3 and 0. Oh. Here's Brandon. And there's a strike. Big opportunity for the Reds in the first. Lance Nicks on deck for Cincinnati. That's hit towards the alley and left. Closing fast is the left fielder Francisco. He'll haul it in. 
He'll make the catch. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Phillips, his 34th run batted in. And the Reds have tied this one up at one. Looked like he got a little bit on the end of the bat. Yeah, he did, but he still hit it very well. And you've got a guy that ranged pretty well in the left center field to pick it up. Good swing right here ahead in the count, looking for something he can drive. And you're right, he did get it just a hair off the sweet spot. So the game's tied at one on the sacrifice fly. Here comes Nix. And first and second for the Reds now with one out. In the air to left, sky towards the warning track. Francisco edge of the track will haul it in. The runners will have to hold. And just like that in two pitches, Reyes has a chance to get out of what was a monumental hole. That'll bring up the catcher, Ramon Hernandez. Throughout his career, of course, he came up in Oakland, then went to San Diego, and then the last three years is in Baltimore. Has faced the Indians a lot, and against Cleveland, he's a 289 career hitter with six homers, 38 knocked in. He's facing Reyes for the first time. It's still trying to collect a big hit here in the first. You could start much worse than Reyes did a walk a hit batter and a walk bases loaded nobody out and if he gets out of this the way he is right now he'll be pretty happy I'll tell you, if he goes into the dugout with only giving up one run he ought to pop the champagne. That's where the celebration. If the Reds inside. can't get another run out of this the way he started this inning off. And I have a team meeting. Big opportunity for Cincinnati here in the first. Hairston off second, Bruce off first. And another 3 0 count. You green light him right here? In this inning, yes. He's smart enough to lay off something that he can't handle. Big hole in right center. They're shading him towards the left center, and Reds fans know how often Hernandez has gone to right and right center. He won't get a chance to swing. That's ball four. Three walks and a hit batter in the inning. Base is loaded again, and here comes Adam Rosales. This is what puts gray on the top of your head and gray in your beard, isn't it, if you're a manager? He's hoping one of those coolers down there is filled with milk and magnesium. <laughs> or something stronger. Here's Rosales in at 242. He'll face Reyes for the first time. Alex Gonzalez on deck. Strike zone, it's one and one. A golden opportunity for Cincinnati here in the first. In the air to the right side, over is Garko. Is he going to have room next to the tarp? He'll haul it in. The Reds let a big chance go by the boards. They get a run on a sacrifice fly. We're tied at one, but they strand three. Was had a serious look on his face of late because he's been out of the lineup since last weekend. The hope is he'll be back sometime this weekend. He is available to pitch hit tonight. 
He could be in the lineup as early as tomorrow and hopefully by Sunday he definitely will be in the lineup. He was cleared in case you missed the final story cleared to play again after the Reds after a bevy of tests determined that it was uh, just an inner ear infection and that's the good news. Here's Johnny Peralta who lead it off hitting fifth in the inning. Peralta DeRosa Garco in the first inning if you joined us late Grady Sizemore clubbed his eighth homer to give the Indians a one nothing lead. Peralta has been playing third of late with Cabrera playing short but without the designated hitter in effect. They moved him back to short to keep his bat in the lineup moved Cabrera over to second. And Johnny at 264 homer 18 knocked in. It's an Indian team that'll hit. They're fifth in the American League, 274. They don't hit as many homers as they used to. They've hit 41. In fact, the Reds have hit 42 coming into today, so their homer ties it. The two teams now at 42 home runs, and a Royal will issue a walk to lead off the second. Speaking of Joey Votto, Joey yesterday when the word finally came down, met with the reporters. Here was his comment about how he was feeling. Today I, I, I hit in the cage a little bit. I did some running. Yesterday I lifted some weights. I was a little worn out just because, uh, you know, getting over the illness and, um, you know, just tired from all the travel and just uh, wiped out in general. And, uh, you know, today I felt great, you know, getting some running in and doing some hitting. You know, more than anything, I lifted my spirits. Good to see him back in the batting cage today. You know, George, he's a real soft spoken guy. He measures his words before he answers any questions, but he wears his emotions right out on his face. Bouncer down to short. Six, four, yes, sir, E3, three, the 33rd double play for the Reds. That erases the walk, and there's two away here in a second. And you could just tell over the last week or so that he just was not himself. Uh, he was even more soft spoken than ever before. He. You know, he would just look like he was whipped. And even though they said he was over the flu or over whatever, you know, problem he had, that, uh, you know, he was still obviously plaguing him and really kept him from doing not just baseball activities, but just normal activities. And you couple to be feeling bad with the kind of travel the Reds have had to do in the last couple of weeks. And it can wear you out going through different time zones, different climates. You go from here where it's cool to Arizona, where it's 110 degrees. Uh, and no humidity. Then you go out to San Diego where they got the little June bloom going early in the mornings. It's uh, it can play with you. There's no question about that. And people might sit home and say well gee I could have figured out it was an inner ear infection. But if you run a team and you're a medical doctor Dr. Timothy Kremchak or Mark Mann you want to make sure you don't make any mistakes. You test everything. They were also worried about the irregular heartbeat that bothered him at times too. So he's OK ready to play and the Reds hopeful will see him back for a dealer near you. Visit buyatoyota.com by JTM food family fun JTM and by Jeep. You talk we listen. It's a new day. Have fun out there Jeep. Anthony Reyes going to work here in the second. Alex Gonzalez, the number eight hitter. Bronson Arroyo, then the top of the order. Willie Tavares do up. What do you do if you're Anthony Reyes and you escape in that first and you head back to take a breather, Chris? Well, you know, George, you just try to forget what went on. You look at the scoreboard and you say, hey, I'm starting even at one and one right here. Let's forget whatever happened. You try to erase whatever happened in the first inning. You just go after the, the Reds like you would normally have prepared to. Easier said than done. No balls, two strikes to Gonzalez, the red shortstop. Reyes was originally drafted by the Tigers and selected by the Cardinals out of USC. Made it to the major leagues after being selected in 2003. In 2005, for the first time, and he was a major contributor for St. Louis in a couple of key years. 2006, he appeared in 17 games and 17 starts. There's a bloop, an effort by Cabrera. He can't get it, and Gonzalez will be on. Lead off hit for Alex. Here comes Bronson, who leads the Reds in sacrifices. 
Hey, I've got to remind you to see this beautiful new Toyota Tundra. If a Reds player hits the Tundra or the Tundra sign during tonight's game, Jamie Stofko of Cincinnati will win it. Register for your chance to win during an upcoming game at your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers. Sign and left, sign and right. Hit it. You got the car. Here's Bronson. Arroyo with seven sacrifices already. Gets the bunt down. They look to second, but they'll take the out at first. There's eight sacrifices. Boy, he's helped himself with the bat, hasn't he? Well, he's got a knack for being able to get it done early in the count, too, before you begin to build the tension, get two strikes on you. You get the first bunt down. Not a great bunt right there. And I would imagine that if Victor Martinez was throwing better and his arm felt better, he may just fire that ball down to second base. A lot of catchers would. Both the Reds catchers would, and I would have thought that uh, Martinez would have given it a shot as well, but he went for the easy out or the sure out at first base and another sacrifice for Bronson. So runner in scoring position in a 1-1 game, and here's Tavares who walked in the first, but then again, who didn't walk in the first? Tavares walked, Harrison hit by a pitch, Bruce walked, Ramon Hernandez walked, three walks and a hit batter. The only run the Reds got out of the first to sacrifice fly from Brandon Phillips. Slap foul and in a hole is 0-2. Willie Tavares. You know, Anthony Reyes isn't really throwing hard enough that you should be tempted to swing at those marginal pitches. He's a guy that even if you get two strikes on you, he does not look like he's got to put him away pitch working. I remember him throwing over 90 miles an hour, George. He's get barely getting it up there at 80 to 85. 91, 92 regularly. That's way wide. And when he does try to hump up on it like he did right there, all he does is miss the plate down and wide. It's a pitcher's worst nightmare. And I don't know what's going on with him physically, but it's a manager's worst nightmare, too. And you reach back for something, and there's absolutely nothing there. Hopped up in the infield. The Rosa will take charge, and there's your second out of the inning. Scoring position, Gonzalez. The Reds fail to convert him. Tavares has been one of the Reds' better hitters with runners in scoring position. He and Phillips are the only two hitting over 300. Didn't get it done this time. Two away, and here comes Jerry Harrison Jr., who was hit in the back with a pitch in the first. year of interleague play underway at Yankee Stadium. Jimmy Rollins started it off with a home run. The Phillies now lead the Yankees three to nothing at Yankee Stadium. Colorado and Detroit scoreless in the third. Mets lead Boston one nothing in the second. play for Cincinnati has not been real good. 77 and 95 their overall record. The Indians five games over 500 at 108 and 103 against Cleveland. The Reds are three games under 500 and they've been better of late five and one last year. In fact last year the Reds were nine and six in interleague play. That was tied for the best record among National League teams. American League thumped the National League last year. Last year, the Reds, the Mets, and the Braves were the only ones to finish over 500. The Reds at nine and six last year. Three and zero to Harrison, and he's on for the second time. First hit by a pitch, second time by the walk. Walk issue. The Reds will play the Indians twice here at Great American Ballpark than the last weekend in June at Cleveland. They travel to Kansas City June the 12th through the 14th, travel to Toronto June 23rd and 25th, and then we'll play the White Sox here. Of course, June 20th is the Civil Rights game. That'll be a festive weekend. 
of Cleveland, Kansas City, the White Sox in Toronto on the interleague bill affair this year. I'm looking forward to going to Kansas City where they've renovated the stadium. It was always a beautiful ballpark to start with and see what they did. I'm looking forward to going back to Toronto, George. Twice Seems like this last year we were there. <laughs> Figure that out. I don't know. I'm, you and I have talked a lot about it. I'm not overly enamored with interleague play. It doesn't make much sense to go back to the same city on the road twice in back to back years. Maybe they're just trying to build a natural rivalry between the Blue Jays <laughs> and the Reds. <laughs> we go to the Hockey Hall of Fame, anyways. Again. <laughs> No balls, two strikes to Bruce. Who Think the lake will still be frozen up there? <laughs> Jay trying to get a runner in. Unbelievable. The Reds wow. have stranded five in the first two innings against Anthony Reyes, who's been struggling. Still tied 1-1. It's -one. the number of your choice, the 37664. Standard text rates do apply. What are your thoughts, Chris? My, I go for number five. That's a bouncer down into the left field corner rounding first going to second has been Francisco Francisco will cruise in with a two base hit and a leadoff double for the Indians here in the third. But Francisco the left fielder down the number eight spot in the order. And he rips it right down the left field line and went down there so quickly that Tim Timmons had a little skate to get out of the way of that ball. Early votes. Well, you got some supporters, Chris. Eliminate completely. No, no, no. I was number five, George. I'm number four. Oh, I thought you said four. No. What's five? Five is every other year. I mean, no interleague play one year? Correct. And then every Only other in the year. odd years. So this would be an interleague year. Next year, we go to San Diego, Arizona, L.A., and San Francisco. Instead of interleague play, I don't mind interleague play, but I like to see less of it. I mean, I can see playing your natural rival, say the Indians, for one series. Here's a bunch shown by Reyes. It's one ball and one strike, and then maybe one other team. Do it in one week. One series against your interleague natural rival, the other one against another team that you surface in, and then instead of playing those extra interleague games. I'd rather play more games against teams out of your division. In other words, more games against the Giants, the Dodgers, the Braves, teams who used to be in the same division that the Reds were in. Uh, and instead of, for instance, playing six games against the Braves, play nine. I don't think it's going to happen, but. No, I don't think so either. But, you know, interleague play has been, it's a success story. There's no question about it. Uh, the Major League Baseball can look at the bump in attendance and viewership. You know, over the years, but I think now that it has begun to run its course to the point where it needs to be tweaked a little bit, one way or another. I'm not sure exactly how, but you know, I like the idea of every other year. Unfortunately, my idea wasn't good enough to make the top four. We'll we'll make a special one for you. It's kind of evening out. 33 percent for add more, 38 percent for eliminating. Well, there's only 4,000 boats in right now, though, said George. So let's, let's give it some time. This has been one of the more aggressive phone call and text nights that we've had. Well, I mean, Fridays the guys in the truck saying it's amazing. Fridays are big. Run down. They've got a shot for the runner at third. Here's the throw, and he is a dead duck. Great job by Adam Rosales. Bad job with the bunt by Reyes, and the Reds will nail the go-ahead run. Well, you got to figure that Eric Wedge felt somewhat comfortable in sending Anthony Reyes out there to bunt because if you ever been in the National League as long as Reyes has, he had to do that before and many times. But he did it to first base. You bunt right into a trap when you bunt to the first baseman, especially when it's a converted thir third baseman playing first. Good arm, good fielder. Rosales puts the throw right on the money, and even though there was no force play, they're able to get that lead runner. So the runner a race from second. There's one out runner at first, and here comes Cabrera, the switch hitting leadoff hitter. He fly it out first time up. Cabrera only 23, native of 
Venezuela came up at the end of last year. Boy, he was something else. He lit it up at nearly 400 last year in the last month of the season. And we've heard it the last couple of years that the Indians were thinking more and more of moving Johnny Peralta to a corner. And he'd been playing some third. Mark DeRosa they acquired in the offseason, although DeRosa's not hit anywhere near where they had hoped he would hit. Mark's playing third tonight. Cabrera, bright young star defensively. He's their best shortstop right now. And offensively, he's taken over the leadoff spot. Here's the one two. Gonzalez will take it himself. Yes, sir. Another twin killing. Two on the night for the Reds. 34 on the season. Base runner race. Here we go to the bottom of three. Or visit Reds.com. <laughs> You would have played better today if you wore that when you were playing golf. Well, you know early that. for a rally cap here, isn't it, George? I mean. Yeah, but you see, that's your Fox Sports Ohio logo. That's where it. Did you I get the memo that we're supposed to wear it this way so you show the logo? Well, we got the memo, all right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, these are sweet hats. They are pretty good. Really, 20,000 of them are giving away tomorrow. That's uh, about half of Jesse's inventory. It's, uh, it's pretty good. You know, it's really one of the highlights of all the giveaways all year long is the. Daddy Wagner's FS Ohio for you. hat giveaway day. I like the color. I like the the other sponsor we have on there, Skyline Chili. Thanks for their help. That's tomorrow. Hope you join us at Great American Ballpark. Always one of the best giveaways of the summer. Here's Brandon Phillips. Did that clip him? Just missed him. Phillips produced the Reds' lone run in the first, a bases loaded sacrifice fly that tied the game at one. Brandon in the lineup today. Against the team that traded for him from the Montreal Expos. And he's first time that the Indians played the Reds when he was with Cincinnati for the first time. Everybody wanted to ask him questions and he obliged by saying I hate the Indians. I never want to see him again. Since then he's kind of said well, I've turned the page on it. I just want to beat everybody we play. In the air right center field. Who's going to take charge. Chu will and there's one away. Well if you're a Reds hitter tonight. And if you're looking for a fastball to hit from Anthony Reyes. It's going to be a very long and frustrating night. He has not shown the propensity tonight to throw his fastball at all for a strike. He threw one on a 3 0 count I think so far on the night. But everything else that he's thrown in the strike zone is an off speed pitch. It almost reminds you of Paul Byrd you know who used to pitch for the Indians for quite a while. Yeah, you're right. He mixed the pitches up. He had kind of a old fashioned type of a herky jerky loosey goosey delivery. It would be very deceiving. Big slow curveball slow change up. You've got to think breaking ball when you step into batter's box and just let the fastball go sit on something slow and let it rip. One away and here comes Lance Nix. He flied out to left in the first. And that really that philosophy though George goes against what you train for as a hitter. You train as a hitter to make your your back quick and to get into the zone without any extra movement and get right to the hitting spot. Like that. Pretty good going deep looking back is Chu against the wall. He'll haul it in. He hit it a ton but straight up in the air. And don't forget when the Reds get it done with a run batted in this season that means another twenty five dollars from Shakely goes to the Reds community fund. Shakely it's done. One of those nights where you have opportunity after opportunity and you hope by the time you get to the ninth inning it hasn't cost you a ball game when you don't convert the Reds have already left five on base through the first two. Here's Ramon who walked in the first inning.
Indians do most of their advanced scouting by a video and talking with Eric Wedge before the game today. He said, I've noticed it. He said, you've got a pretty good guy behind the plate. Ramon Hernandez has played a lot better than we saw him play in the American League the last couple of years. I think everybody in the Reds family, Chris, would agree with that. I mean, we didn't see him day in and day out. The Indians saw a lot more of him, but he's been a lot more proficient here in Cincinnati than he was in Baltimore. Well, he's been good at the plate and behind the plate, George. Uh, no complaints at all from the pitchers or anybody else involved. He got bad reviews from you know just about everybody from scouts other executives from teams and he's been nothing but a model citizen and a hard worker since he's been over here great trade I think to be able to get him over here he walks for the second time five walks issued by Reyes that's up and in to Adam Rosales who popped out to end the first. innings already Victor Martinez was probably wishing he was playing first tonight instead of catching he's been all over the place back there Martinez will DH he'll play some first they'll get his bat in the lineup every night they're limited without the DH and they play National League teams three and oh Rosales two home runs one on the last home stand and one at Arizona on the most recently completed road trip. Back to back walks that's now six walks issued by Reyes. Well, how about this. Strike and ball ratio. Normally, we talk about having twice as many strikes as balls, and that's an excellent ratio. He's working on throwing more balls, Reyes does, and he has strikes. And he still has only given up one run in the ball game. That is the, the there's some magic going on here somewhere. I mean, how does that happen? Amazing, only one run and one hit. The only guy who has a hit off him is the guy coming to the plate, Alex Rodriguez, Alex Gonzalez, who singled in the second. Unless you're bringing your sandwich up there, there's nothing to hit. Reds still haven't been able to come up with a key hit with runners in scoring position. Had the bases loaded twice in the first. Had a runner on second with one out in the second and couldn't convert. And here they've got first and second with two outs in the third. And one strike. Not often you've seen this kind of wildness from any pitcher, but from this guy, a new career high for him and only two and two thirds innings of work. He's got a chance to blow right on past this. And really, the only pitch that's been effective at throwing strikes has been that breaking ball. Yeah, the breaking ball and the changeup, both of them coming in there in the low 70s. Back in the old days, some 
Reds names Indians names at the top of that list. Now there we go to the fourth Grady Sizemore will lead it off the only Indian run was a Sizemore homer in the first inning his eighth of the season. Yes, he came in hitting only 213, but Chris, if you're starting the team tomorrow and you're having a draft, this is one of the first guys you'd be thinking about drafting, huh? Well, you can hit him anywhere in the lineup, George. You can hit him from leadoff down to number three. He'll steal bases for you. And normally a very good hitter, although he's just off to a bad start. You know, sometimes when a team goes bad, even some of its better players can be sucked down with it. And I think that might be happening to Sizemore this year. When, you know, to talk to the Cleveland Indians guys. You know, when he does hit the ball hard, it seems to be somebody there. Although he's hit the ball hard twice tonight and he's picked up a couple of knocks for the Indians. Two for two for the 26 year old Sizemore. A sweet swing and he's on to lead it off. I think that might be the same pitch he hit the first time up, except a better location this time for Bronson Arroyo. Sinking fastball still had enough of the plate for Sizemore to tattoo it into right field. Well, Sizemore is a 2020 guy. The last four years, each of the last four years, he's had more than 20 stolen bases, more than 20 homers. In fact, last year he had 33 homers and 38 stolen bases. But again, you talk about an off year. He's got six stolen bases and he's been caught six times already this year. Uncharacteristic for him. Here's the switch hitting Martinez. Victor bounced the first first time up. Number one in on base percentage, number one in average in the American League. He serves this to left. Here comes Nix in rapidly, and Sizemore is gone more than halfway to second, but he alertly gets back. You can see Nick's had an idea of trying to double him up, but Sizemore got back quickly. That's a sign of a good hitter, the way Victor Martinez took that ball the other way smoothly, but Nick's there to haul it in. One out, one on, and here's Chu. Bounce to first, first time up. And been hot of late. 389 in the last 10 games. The Indians ever get it right, meaning if they get their bullpen right, there's Carl Willis trying to give his right hander a bit of a pep talk. I mean, nurse him through three innings like that, huh, Chris? Well, you know, just to be able to get him through what he has been through with the stuff he's taken out there tonight is very impressive, George. I mean, he's going out there on guts. I, I gotta speculate that he may end up seeing him on the list here not, not too long because he just does not look like he's healthy at all. But he's He's given it everything he has to stay in the ball game. The ball's one strike to chew. There is somebody up in the Indians bullpen again. They may have already made a decision. They may already be out of the game. Shoes is two, one and two. Now he can hit the home run. There's no doubt about that. Chu's got power, and he tries to go yard on that one. He's got five home runs already this year. He had 14 for the Indians last year. One and two. Has to sneak it by him on the inside corner. Misses. And it's two balls and two strikes. Now choose a guy that started his major league career coming over from Korea in Seattle where he promptly went two for 29 before he was traded to the Indians from former Red Ben Broussard. That was back in 2006. And he's been good with the Indians. I mean if you look at his stats from 2007 he batted 294. In limited time, he only had 17 at bats. Last year, he had 317 at bats, and he batted 309 with 14 runs, 14 home runs. Full count, 3-2. There goes the runner. Here's a fly ball to center. Hit pretty good. Tavares back, warning track. He'll get it one step in front of the wall. Now 
we've seen some very high hit fly balls on the night. Now this is a can of corn because you've got a speedy center fielder Willie Tavares. Two away and here comes Peralta who walked in the second. There goes the runner. The throw from his knees won't be in time by Ramon Hernandez. Number seven for Sizemore. Well, you know, George, what happens a lot is that a pitcher, once you get two outs, you begin to ignore the runner at, at first base because you're not so concerned about keeping the double play in order. So very quietly that runner gets an extra step at first and then takes off and now he's in scoring position even with two outs he can still come in on the base hit. And it rolls behind to an O to Peralta. His numbers as he steps in at 264. Not where you'd expect him to be, but after the April that he had, not bad. Well, he's he was two, near 200 in the month of April. Yeah, he's a 268 career hitter, and he'll get back up to where he normally would be. Where at this point, he only has to go four points. But last year, he had 276. He is a guy, though, that has some home runs, and he's the type of player I think that you would hope that Edwin Encarnacion could give you the same type of numbers overall. It's anywhere from 15 to 22, 23 home runs a year will drive in, you know, 60 to 75 runs a year. And that's the, the kind of player they hope Encarnacion will be. As Mark DeRosa came over from the Cubs in the offseason, last year in Chicago, he was instrumental in helping the Cubs win the division. Wherever you put him, at second, at third, or in left field, he produced offensively. This year he just started off in a hole from the get go. He was 0 for 12 to start the season and never really recovered in April. He's gotten it a little bit under control here in May and the average up to 253. And he's had some success against Arroyo so. Hernandez and Arroyo will talk it over coming in. The Rosa hit 429 9 for 21 against Bronson. Ryan Garco on deck. The Royal thought he had him. He got a piece of it to stay alive. Single by Sizemore, a walk to Peralta there on second and first. Yes, missing. And I'm not so sure that that pitch is even designed to be a strike. I think that when he comes inside of DeRosa with that pitch right there, he's just, it's a two seam fastball that you kind of want him to, to tease at it, yes, but he's going to go probably go back outside with a slow curveball. Just trying to change a hitter's eye, make him a little uncomfortable in the batter's box, and then pull the string on that hook of his and see if he can get DeRosa to wave at it. 2 2. Another sinker. Down to third. They'll go to second and get the out. Single and a walk, nothing to show for it. Reds go back to work as we go to the fourth. The Royal do up, bottom of four. Off as we go to the bottom of four and face a new pitcher, Chris, where we speculated is right. Anthony Reyes out of the game after three innings. One run, one hit, one strikeout, and six walks. 59 pitches in three innings. And here's Jensen Lewis will take over. Third season of the Jensen Lewis has been with the Bray or with the uh, Cleveland Indians. 
26 games in 207 and then 51 last year. And he was up and throwing right from the very first inning after Anthony Reyes couldn't find the strike zone. They had him up there, I think, after the third walk of the of the ball game, which was in the first inning. Indians have already used 37 players. That's the most number of players, and Jeff Kellogg gets the worst of that foul tip. That's the most number of players in the American League, and the vast majority of those players have come in the bullpen. It's been a, like a revolving door in the bullpen for Eric Wedge and his staff. Most players use, and it's a similar story for the Washington Nationals. They've made most of their changes in the bullpen, too. But Eric Wedge and Carl Willis have sent down to the bullpen to bullpen coach Chuck Hernandez and Danny Williams. A host of new faces hopeful of trying to find a way to put a bullpen together that'll work. Well those guys who you just saw Eric Wedge have to be very happy with being able to get through three innings watching their starter Anthony Reyes throw the way he did and still be tied in his ballgame. And having only given up one hit. Arroyo strikes out. That's strikeout number one for Jensen. Time for Aflac to the answer. And he uh, guesses, Chris, we've talked a lot about this in recent years. The likes of Jim Tome, Manny Ramirez, people like that. And of course, Frank Robinson. The great Frank Robinson, too, from the Cincinnati Reds. Affleck. Who has, to this point, the most number of home runs in the state of Ohio? It is the Hall of Famer from the Reds, Frank Robinson, at 197. Had Manny Ramirez stayed in Cleveland, he'd have that record now. <laughs> Fortunately, he went to Boston and now. And he wouldn't have gotten in trouble if yeah. he stayed in Cleveland. You're right. <laughs> Although he did get in a little bit of trouble, and that was Albert Bell. Here's the list. J.B. at 195. Jim Tomei still has a chance to be the all-time Ohio home run hitter. He's with the White Sox, and of course he'll come here for interleague play. Adam Dunn passed the 140 mark last year as a Red. Kozuski at 148 as Dunner passed Ted as the number one left-handed home run hitter in Reds history too. And Tony Perez and Beta Pinsky. Bouncer to the right side. Double dribble by Garko, but Jensen is there to bail him out. Tavares is retired. Two away. Well, anytime you see a bobble like that and you're a speedster like Willie Tavares, you're going to turn on the jet burners to try to get down to first, and that's exactly what he did. And sometimes infielders will bobble just knowing that you've got a runner that's going to be that fast and they think that they've got to field that ball speedier than ever. Here's Jerry Harrison Jr. hit by a pitch and walk. He's been on base twice. Golden opportunities for the Reds in the first two innings. They stranded five and in fact through three they stranded seven. The only run produced. In the first, when the bases were loaded twice, a sacrifice fly from Brandon Phillips. Hey, I mean, very clearly, Anthony Reyes didn't have good stuff. We just hope he's healthy and not hurt, but he gutted it out for three innings. Give him credit for that. Always been a competitor. We've watched him in St. Louis. Having said that, the Reds lost golden opportunities in all three innings. Two away, nobody on for Jerry Hairston Jr. This one popped up to the right side. How does Cabrera, who's going to take charge? Chu will, and that'll do it. So Jensen has a one, two, three inning, the first clean inning for the Indians tonight. We're still tied at one. AT&T, the nation's fastest 3G network. AT&T, your world delivered. The Reds have stranded seven through the first four. We're tied at one. Bronson Arroyo facing the bottom of the order. Garco, Francisco, and the pitcher's spot as we go to the top of inning number five. George Grant, Chris Wells, great to have you with us. Jeff Pecoro, Jim Day, 
keeping you up to date with Reds live as well. Mark Wagner, Jesse Jackson up in the booth with us. Christian Roberts, our producer tonight. Brian Hunterman's our director down in the truck. Sarah Mann, Lauren White, Matt Sigafoos putting that highlight package together for you, too. We are missing John Brody down in the truck because everybody in Reds country knows where he is. Syracuse once again in the lacrosse national championship semifinals. So you know where he's taking Benji, right? Hopefully to get a haircut. <laughs> Swing and a miss to Carco. It's a boys weekend. Cindy let Benji and dad head to Syracuse for the semifinals. Two balls, two strikes. Hope you join us all weekend long as we zero in on interleague play. Ken Weaver will be handling our pre and post game coverage. Reds live before the game tomorrow, 6 30. This one slap foul down the left field line. It'll be Homer Bailey tomorrow against David Huff, another lefty that the Reds will face. And Chris, it'll be good to see Homer back. For his first start of this year, he was impressive this spring. Well, he was very impressive this spring. George had a chance to talk to Ted Power, his pitching coach down with Louisville today, and he reiterated to me that he was throwing the ball exceptionally well down there. He's added a couple of wrinkles uh, to his pitching strategy, and uh, I'm anxious to see him get out there and deal, throwing the ball with authority. And I think that, you know, the Reds had that confidence in Homer Bailey all along, especially after the spring that he had. I think that it's just a matter of time before this guy comes to the major leagues and sticks for a long time. Hopped up, Hernandez tosses the mask away, and he squeezes it. One away here in the fifth. In case you joined us late, Homer Bailey has been recalled. So is right-handed pitcher Carlos Fisher, who will be with the club. Ramon Ramirez was optioned down to Louisville after Edinson Volquez was placed on the disabled list with his back spasms, and Darnell McDonald was designated for assignment. And of course, Johnny Gomes, his contract was selected from Louisville, so Gomes is with the club too. There you see Homer's numbers. He'll be starting tomorrow for the Reds. On Sunday, it'll be Johnny Cueto against Cliff Lee. And boy, Lee is back on the beam after winning the Cy Young Award last year and starting off in horrible fashion. He's one of the best pitchers in the American League again. And the Astros will come to town. Aaron Harang against Wandy Rodriguez on Monday. Michael Owings against Roy Oswald on Tuesday. And Bronson Arroyo's going tonight is due to go on Wednesday. That's drilled foul by Ben Francisco. Francisco doubled the lead off the third. Hope you join us all weekend long. Hope you also have a chance to come to downtown Cincinnati. It's taste of Cincinnati this weekend in the downtown area. That's always a lot of fun. And we hope you take some time on this Memorial Day weekend to pause for a moment and remember and honor all of those who serve our country and who have given their lives so that we can enjoy this holiday weekend enjoy the game of baseball and enjoy our lives in the greatest nation in the world. One ball two strikes. He flips that frisbee up and that's a strikeout. For Branson Arroyo that strikeout number one of the evening. Hey bring your family out to the ballpark for some fun Monday on Memorial Day at 110 for the ereach.com family game when one family member purchases a full price ticket the entire family gets non premium tickets at half price for tickets call 513-381-REDS or go to reds.com offer valid in advance of game day only. You got the uh, SS Welsh in the water yet? No, George. Doesn't look like it's going to be seaworthy this year. A so I sold it to some unsuspecting <laughs> sucker over the winter. Jesse, is that the one you bought? <laughs> Somebody popped one of the pontoons. <laughs> there it is. Guy, it's, 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 it's great until it rains. There it is right there. Nice of you to bring it to the park. We saw you get off when you got to the ballpark today. And the band was playing for you as you got off. That was pretty neat. That was it. It's amazing how you get that up the river and then around the moat at the Ponderosa. That's uh, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. 
Two balls, two strikes. Rip. Foul. Uh, Jensen Lewis got to be a special night for him coming back and playing in his hometown with the Anderson High School, of course, and went on to play at Vanderbilt. And the young man that came into a ball game a couple of games last year was saddled with the loss in the first of the, the two games that he pitched against the Reds here at Great American Ballpark. But still, in all, whether you come back as a visiting player or ever lucky enough to be a home player in your hometown, it's a it's a special time. And Eric Wedge well aware of that before the game he's talking about it. Jensen of course local product. Eric was from Fort Wayne Indiana grew up as a Reds fan favorite player with Johnny Bench so he's cognizant of history and cognizant of giving his young man a chance to appear before the home folk. Well Bronson finally gets him two strikeouts in the inning for a Royal one two three for him when we return Jack they're only. 7 and 11 at home and 9 and 15 on the road and again Central Division competition they've been under 500 9 and 12 and added all up their eight and a half games back hopeful of trying to get their pitching straightened out you know they hit well enough they're one of the top five hitting teams in the league they just struggled pitching that's your Honda standings update here's Jay Bruce to lead it off as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Brandon Phillips due to follow and then Lance Nix. Bruce walked in the first to load the bases and struck out in the second with two runners on. On deck. Big day tomorrow for Brandon. The official dedication for Brandon Phillips Field is scheduled for noon tomorrow. Located at Clark Montessori School in Winton Place. He donated over $32,000 to the Reds Community Fund to help fund that field. It's the home of the Cincinnati Public Schools Clark Montessori varsity and junior varsity baseball teams. Along with the Reds Community Fund RBI program. Bouncer down to second. Bruce retired, and there's one away. Should be a big day for him. He was excited about it today. Mom and Dad will be in town, and for Brandon, it'll be uh, another example of how he's really latched on to the Reds community and Chris an example of how you know from top to bottom the players on this Reds roster have well George you know part of the deal is now that they are I don't know if they're required but they're asked and I think they've had 100 percent participation to donate some of their salary back to the Reds community fund which in turns fixes up fields and makes it makes you know Sand lots and, and parking lots and turns them into baseball fields, whether it's an in inner city or out in rural uh, Reds country somewhere, so that kids can play baseball and softball. And they've done wonderful work all over the area. Hundreds of fields the Reds Community Fund has, has come around and, and refurbished. And Aaron Harang had a special field dedicated that he donated a lot of money to just about a week or so ago. Um, and it's just a continuing effort that they do. Year after year, and it just gets better and better, and they're just building a tr tremendous foundation. Two balls, no strikes to Brandon. And it's 3 0. Thought it was ball four. Jeff Kellogg says, "Uh, uh it's three and one." Wow. You know, Jeff Kellogg. I mean, in his defense, own play not has seen so many balls down the dirt. <laughs> he may have forgotten what the strike zone is. It's one of those nights. It is one of those nights. You're the home plate umpire. <laughs> There's a bouncer down to third, backhanded by DeRosa, the long throw. He'll get Brandon by a step. 
Nice play by the Indians third baseman. Uh, Mark DeRosa is kind of the, the Indians version of Jerry Harrison. Doesn't have the same speed, but he gives them the versatility in the infield, the outfield. He can play anywhere. He can hit in just about any spot in the lineup, and that's a dandy defensive play he makes right there. D gets up, doesn't rush his throw, and he feeds a perfect one over to first base. In fact, it seemed a little strange going to Chicago to see the Cubs, Chris, when you, you talk about what made them a good team last year. And Kerry Wood's been a fixture in the Cubs clubhouse for so many years. He was a leader, a leader not just uh, the way he played the game, but the way he carried himself in the clubhouse. And Mark DeRosa established himself as that last year, too. Both of them gone, both of them here in the American League in Cleveland. There's a bouncer, the Reds one, two, three in the fifth. Golden opportunities missed, and we're still tied 1 1. The main goal would be up here, help this ball club win, and uh, do what I can from uh, from the right side of the plate and play some outfield. There's two things I'm going to bring every day is, you know, hustle and, you know, respect the game. And, you know, and I'm a baseball player, so regardless, you know, where I'm at, you know, I mean, you're going to get, you know, the same out of me. Was that leader down in Louisville, and he's that type, that infectious type, like an Adam Rosales, uh, whose enthusiasm to the game just rubs off on everyone. Also, a special story. He's had to deal with a lot of things off the field to get here as well, George and Chris. Great to have Johnny back, and we wish him the best of luck, Chris. Uh, you know, he battled all the way down the line during spring training to get that try to get that final roster spot. Yeah he did and he almost made the ball club uh, and I'm glad to see him up here now. Jim Day you know that, that's a guy I'm wondering I thought he was a man among the people and here he is up in the press box all by himself up there. I want to see him, I want to see him interact with the fans. I mean that's what's one of the highlights of our broadcast every night is to to see him interact with fans whether it's a birthday girl or whether it's a, on singles night anything and uh, I say we ban him from the press box and get him out there among the common people. He loves your support, I know. As Jubal Cabrera bounces out and there's one away, and here comes Grady Sizemore. Always been a man of the people. Absolutely. There's Sizemore. He homered in the first, singled in the fourth, two for two. Seems like you've been talking about this guy forever, and he still is only 26 years of age. Established himself as one of the best defensive center fielders in the game, Bull Glove winner. And a good offensive player, too. Lazy fly ball to left. Nix is under it. Lance has it. Two away, and here's Victor Martinez. Firestone leaderboard for tonight. Just how good of a start has Victor Martinez had coming into tonight? And even 400, number one in the American League. Right ahead of Miguel Cabrera, and he's also number one in on base percentage in the American League. He's been amazing against right handers this year, he's hit 435. And against left handers, 387. So, wherever it's been, wherever he's had to face a pitcher, he's delivered this year. And we've really seen him mature over the last two or three years in his presence in the clubhouse. Next year, the Reds clubhouse will be right next to the Indians clubhouse in Goodyear, Arizona, for spring training. Indians moved there this year to Goodyear. Talking to Eric Wedge and all the members of the Indians party, they enjoyed the facility and enjoyed their time there this year. The Reds will be right next door. Their facility almost identical to what the Indians have and will share the same stadium. No balls, two strikes. Well, you got to figure these two teams in spring training will play each other at least four times. Mm -hmm. Isn't that about what the Reds would play? The Pirates, Pirates who yep. are the closest down in the, to Sarasota. So that eliminates a lot of travel right there. Gives a Ohio folks a chance to see both of the Ohio teams in spring training when they come down to Arizona. 
Well, there'll be at least four or five trips that are within 20 minutes mm -hmm. for games. That's the Reds facility that's uh, underway, construction underway, which is right next to the Indians facility. And the two are almost identical. State of the art. Stadium is beautiful, a 10,000 seat stadium. There's the Indians side of it, which is right next to the Reds. We did not have time to get the uh, Chris Welsh press room completely finished. It will be ready for you in time for next year. That's a ground ball out. Gonzalez takes care of it. One, two, three for Bronson. The Royals do a fourth when we return in this 1 1 game. Saw where Ramon Hernandez set up and it was way inside. You can't make a mistake to a whole lot of major league hitters, especially those as quality a hitter as, as Grady Sizemore. And that is the only run the Indians have had. Our Coors Light Freeze Cam brought to you by Frost Brood Coors Light. You know, the way this game started, George, you would never think in a million years. Now, you look up at the scoreboard, here we are on the bottom of the sixth inning, and there's a total of two runs. Both the runs came in the first inning, and the Reds have one hit. The Indians only have three. I mean, this, this game had all the indications of a major offensive blowout type game, and just goes to show you, you just really never know. Reds had a great opportunity early, didn't convert. And we're now tied at one. By the way, we get word from the Indians clubhouse that Anthony Reyes left the game with right elbow inflammation. Not a surprise after watching him, Chris, in that first couple of innings. We hope he's okay. Remember, they shut him down last year towards the end of the year with a similar kind of malady. Here's Ramon. He walked twice against Anthony. Be followed by Adam Rosales and Alex Gonzalez. Looks a little bit different tonight. Joey Votto did take batting practice today. He is available to pinch it. Chris Dickerson from the left side as well. Paul Yanish, Ryan Hanning, and Michael Owings available from the right side. And remember, Johnny Gomes is on that bench too. And they will get Hernandez on the one to six to three put out. They nip him by half a step. He's checking his glove out as Jensen Lewis saying, how the heck did that happen? Ball right back. He thinks he's got it. He deflects it right there, but a very quick acting Johnny Peralta is able to make the play mainly because you've got the Reds catcher running. A first out of the six, and here comes Rosales. Current makeup of this Indians bullpen has Jensen, Rafael Betancourt, who the Reds have seen over the years, the veteran Matt Hurgis, Luis Vizcaino, Greg Aquino, and of course Kerry Wood, who's the closer. That's all from the right side. Aaron Laffey's the left handed side of the bullpen, and since moving from the rotation into the bullpen, he's been outstanding for Eric Wedge. Rosales popped out and walked. His first two plate appearances. Seventh Minnesota over Milwaukee, four to nothing in the third. 
Detroit leads Colorado 3 1 in the seventh. The Mets over Boston 4 to 3 in the fifth. And the Pirates and White Sox are scoreless in the third. Alex Rodriguez has homered to give the Yankees their long run in that Philly Yankee game. There's another walk. That's the first walk issued by Jensen Lewis. And all told, the seventh walk issued tonight. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, up. Bringing down the bullpen again. I mean, it's hard to believe, George. You look at the again your scorecard and the scoreboard here. That if, if not for that little blue pit that went over the head of the second baseman by Alice Gonzalez, the Indians would be looking at no hitting the Reds right now. But the Reds have had plenty of opportunities when you've received seven bases on balls. You've had a chance to push a run across here and there. Alex has got the only knock. Good news is they have seven bases on balls. The bad news is they got left seven on base through the first five. Rosales inching off the bag. Here's Gonzalez. Had that single to center and bounced out one for two. Hey, Reds fans, for great tasting food and family fun, pick up JTM Philly Kits, burgers, or a delicious barbecue from your favorite grocer. JTM Food, Family, Fun. In the air, right field, back is Chu at the wall, looking up. He can't get it. It's off his glove. It'll go into the seats. And in the end, the Reds will be robbed of a run in all probability because Rosales, if the ball clinks off the wall, would have scored. As it is, he'll have to stop at third. It's a ball that Chu gets a glove on, but he can't hold it. This ball really slicing bad, and it had Chu all turned around. He was playing very shallow on Alex Gonzalez, who normally does not hit the ball all that far to right field. And the ball just kept slicing away from him. Chu couldn't get it under control at all. And actually, that's a great break for the Indians. Just ticked off the end of the glove and glanced one hop into the seats. So with one out, it'll be second and third. And Rosales would have scored. And Gonzalez probably would have ended up on second. As it is, it'll be second and third, one out, and they'll bring the infield in with the pitcher Arroyo coming to the plate. Now you know he just picked up another sacrifice his first time up. And if you're ever going to squeeze with somebody, it would be this guy because he's been so proficient at dropping a bunt down. But he also swings the bat pretty well. He steps out of the box, looks at Mark Berry in the third base coach's what box. What you hope to do here if you're a pitcher is simply make contact. When you take the, the sacrifices away from Arroyo, he's only struck out six times in 13 at bats. Eight sacrifices on the season. There's the bunt. It's rolling. It'll go foul. If it stays fair, Rosales scores. As it is, it just rolled foul. Well, nearly perfectly executed by the Reds. Everybody waited the exact time. Arroyo didn't give it up too soon. Rosales didn't give it up too soon. If that ball stays fair, the Reds have the go ahead run. And it doesn't keep you from doing it again. Now, on a 1 1 count, you can do it again. The only thing you're worried about is that the Indians begin to pitch out a little bit. And I'm surprised, really, that they haven't pitched out so far in this at bat. One ball, one strike. Infield still in. Rosales inches off third. In the dirt. How many of those Man. has Martinez had tonight? In the middle of the NHL playoffs, he's been like a goalie here tonight. Even with the outfield shallow, if Arroyo gets a base hit, because the infield is in, Gonzalez has a giant lead off second. He should score easily, too. Breaking ball misses. Actually, George, they could always put that suicide squeeze on and 
Just have Gonzalez never stop. See if he can score two runs on a suicide. Now Brandon Phillips would do that. Well, I mean, that's, a, that's an amateur baseball player that if you see some top rated amateur teams around, they'll pull that one. But the third baseman fields it. Oftentimes he never even thinks about that trailing runner. Three balls, one strike. Fouled off will go 3-2. Well, he missed with the breaking ball. He fouled off the fastball. But you throw on 3-1, do you throw on 3-2? Run two hits for the Reds or run three hits for the Indians. The Reds another scoring opportunity second and third one out here in the sixth. In the air to the right side. Rosales will go halfway. The second baseman Cabrera has it. And the runners will have to hold. Well, a battling at bat from Bronson Arroyo. Goes for naught. The Reds again now 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position tonight. Oh, battling, yes, but still he had an opportunity to push the winning run across or the go ahead run across anyway. Was that able to keep the butt fair? I'm not getting on Arroyo because he's the best butter the Reds have, at least statistically speaking, certainly the best butter among pitchers. But man, that's one of those that you think, wow. If the Reds don't score a run here, if Tavares doesn't get a base hit, or somehow the Reds don't push a run across in his inning, this is another great opportunity by the wayside. And when you're looking at a ball club, the Reds that is over the last six games who have hit as a team 213. You realize that those opportunities don't come all that often. And you have a feeling that one of the things Wedge was talking about, even though there are two outs. Don't forget about the bunt with Tavares up, and that's the way they're going to play it defensively, too. At the edge of the grass at first and third, Barco at first, DeRosa at third. Fastball swing and a miss, strike one. Tavares tonight, walk, popped up, grounded out. A ground rule double to put runners in second and third, and the Reds still trying to struggle to get the run in here in the sixth in a 1 1 game. That's a call strike three. He nipped away at that outside corner, gets the out he needs, and the Reds will strand two more. They've stranded nine through six. Here's the story of it. Grady Sizemore in the top of the first rips his eighth home run, his seventh career homer against the Reds. Then Brandon Phillips in the bottom of the first scores a sacrifice fly to tie the game at one. It came after two walks and a hit batter. Meanwhile, the Reds have turned a couple of double plays, now 34 on the season. But the Indians have also flashed some defense. Add it all up, and the Reds have stranded nine base runners. That's through six innings of work. We're going to the seventh. A run three hits for Cleveland. A run two hits for the Reds. Cleveland is stranded two. The Reds have stranded nine. Branson Arroyo delivers. And Chu bounces one down to second. If you joined us later, Arroyo's been in there all night for the Reds. Anthony Reyes started went three innings. Allowed only one hit and one run. Struck out one, but he walked six. But he left the game after struggling with those six walks. And the report we got from the Indians clubhouse, he left the game with right elbow inflammation. And all he can do is hope he's going to be okay, but very clearly, after watching him for the last four years in St. Louis, he did not look comfortable. He did not look fluid. Mechanically, he just didn't look like the same pitcher. And certainly the results weren't there either. Here's Peralta who walked twice. Pro 
can bat through in the center field a base hit. Don't forget you can become a fan of Fox Sports Ohio on Facebook www.facebook.com keyword Fox Sports Ohio. Great shot from center field of Great American Ballpark side of game number one of interleague play for 2009. Yeah, good crowd here tonight too George coming out to watch the Indians the battle for the Ohio Cup and also the fireworks after the game. Great walking around downtown they're starting to set up for taste of Cincinnati which will be in the Fountain Square area down on 5th Street if you're in the area this weekend all day tomorrow all day Sunday and during the day on Monday too. I saw that big wad of five dollar bills sticking out of your pants there you you just peel them off like off of a uh, little notepad don't you have them glued at the very top day as you go by taste of Cincinnati you're just dropping them and eating and dropping them and eating and that's monopoly money yeah. it, it is everything is under five bucks so you get I mean yeah. every all the best restaurants in town have a bill of fare and it's uh, always one of the enjoyable weekends of the summer. Unfortunately, we're usually on the road when it happens. Only it's only been a couple of times in the last few years, and the Reds have been home. But they do a great job. The organizers do a tremendous job. They moved it into the Fountain Square area the last few years, and tremendous effort by all involved. So if you get down tomorrow and Sunday or Monday, you'll have some fun. There's a bouncer to the right side. Phillips can't get it. Rounding second, going to third. They got a shot at the runner at third. The throw will be. Kicking away and he'll be safe. Now you couldn't do much better if you're Jay Bruce. He charged that ball hard. It was a squiver that came off the like the hands of Mark DeRosa, like inside out of that ball, and he really had to come hard to get it. And had Jerry Harrison be able to help hold on to that ball, I think you've got him a third. Boy, he has been so accurate with his throws right there. I'm not so sure he gets him or not. He may have been in. Well, so it's first and third with only one out. And here comes Garko. Ryan bounced that. Fly it out 0 for 2. will take it boy the double play has helped the Reds tonight three of them 35 on the season Gonzo takes care of the inning and we're still tied at one available for the series by calling 513-381 Reds or at Reds.com that's a little bit of a different trophy Chris than we used to have when it was a preseason game and <laughs> we used to go up to Columbus right I think it was an empty beer cup back <laughs> in the right. day George <laughs> Pretty impressive. It is very nice looking. Look nice in your uh, living room. Yeah, I'm not up to winning it, but the Reds have a chance right here. They play some splendid defense. They've turned three double play balls, and despite having only two hits on the night, they're right in this ball game at one to one. And they'll face a new pitcher, a left-hander, the only left-hander that the Indians have in their bullpen, Aaron Laffey. He started his first four appearances of the year, nine games overall, and he didn't pitch all that badly out of the starting rotation. He had one very bad start, his last one, three innings of five runs, but after that, when he got him into bullpen, he really he filled their void. Changes for the Indians. Aaron Laffey comes in, and he's been lights out of late out of this bullpen. New third baseman will be Jamie Carroll, veteran National Leaguer. He's over at third, and Mark DeRosa will move from third to first. So it's Francisco Sizemore, Chu in the outfield, Carroll, Peralta, Cabrera, DeRosa in the infield, and Martinez still catching. That's a strike. It's a ball and a strike. The Jensen Lewis goes four, five, and six, three innings. He allowed only one hit. Really an excellent outing for Jensen Lewis, the Anderson High School product. Just exactly what Eric Wedge needed. 
One hit, one walk, two strikeouts. There's a bouncer foul down the third baseline off the bat of Jerry Harrison Jr. It's Harrison, Jay Bruce, and Brandon Phillips, two, three, and four for Cincinnati. One of the interleague debates always is who has the advantage when you talk about the use or non use of the designated hitter. And I guess, Chris, it depends on the team. I mean, there have been years where the Reds would go to Cleveland and due to injury or due to the roster, sometimes the designated hitter rule was helpful to Cincinnati when you had a big bopper that might have been a little under the weather or you put Ken Griffey Jr. in a DH role or whatever. Depends on the year, depends on the team. Broken bat down to third. Carroll has it. One away. And I, as a general rule, probably the American League teams are at more of a disadvantage to come into the National League City. First, in terms of their roster, Eric Wedge talking before the game today about the changes he has to make. But also, those American League managers that haven't managed in the National League, it's a little bit of a different world. Yeah, but George, you know, when you hire a manager nowadays, even if he hasn't had any National League experience or extensive, his bench coach will or somebody on there. I mean, sometimes that's overblown. Yeah. Well, he what? What if he doesn't know how to make a double switch? Well, I think we've seen so many double switches over the last <laughs> few years uh, from Reds managers that sitting at home, I think that every one of our fans could probably figure out how to make a double switch. And hey, maybe it doesn't mean anything about interleague play. We've had two lineup mix ups this past week. Did he go around? Yes, said Tim Timmons. Bruce shakes his head in disagreement and it's 0 and 2. Now they're keeping a lot of breaking balls on Jay Bruce and they're throwing the ball well down in the zone. He's chasing a lot of slow stuff. And really this is very reminding or remindful George of, of what he did last year when he struggled to, towards the I guess the two thirds mark of the season when he was up there striking out a lot being very aggressive at the plate swinging at just about everything. Well the league knew that they've got advanced scouts and they, they didn't even make it worse so that he's still looking for a fastball they keep throwing curveballs and the more aggressive you are the more you're going to fall into that trap. It's part of the learning process. The two away. Laffey gets his first strike out. Here comes Brandon Phillips. Phillips a sacrifice fly to knock in the Reds' long run. Fly to right, bounce to third. Now you know what Brandon's thinking up here. He's yep. looking at the scoreboard. He says it's one to one. We've got two hits. We finally have somebody in here who throws the ball firm, and it's finally a left-hander. And I eat left-handers for lunch. And he's thinking yard. Every time a ball's coming his way, going yard. And by the way, mom and dad are here tonight too. I mean, if, can you provide any more incentive for Brandon Phillips playing against his old team that he didn't break away with really on great terms? He's got his mom and dad here. They're dedicating an amateur field in his name tomorrow, one that he donated a lot of money to. And his ball club needs him because his other big hitter in the lineup is out. Down to third. Here comes Carroll. Scooping. Throwing. Got him. Well, Jamie Carroll. First inning in. Responds with two fine plays. The Reds go quietly. One, two, three. To the eighth we go. The number eight hitter will lead it off. Kentucky Honda Dealers. Visit MyCincinnatiHondaDealer.com for current offers. Well, what a pleasant night for baseball. Kind of a strange game. We are tied one to one. The Reds had golden opportunities in the first three innings. They stranded three in the first, two in the second, two in the third, seven in the first three innings as Anthony Reyes walked six. They pushed across only one run on a sacrifice fly. The lone run the Indians have is a Grady Sizemore homer. And we're tied at one. There's the first out of the top of the eighth inning. And here comes the number nine spot in the order. Jamie Carroll in the double switch into the game. Carroll came into the ninth spot, so he'll bat second in this inning. No one away. Bronson Arroyo keeps chugging along. He's allowed five hits and a run. The Reds have been helped with three double play ground balls. And 
I think Chris there's no doubt both Bronson Arroyo and Aaron Harang knowing they're pitching a great American ballpark in the last couple of years they've changed their modus operandi and they've been getting more ground ball double plays than they ever have in their career. Well they have especially Bronson Arroyo George he's a guy that uh, has already tonight thrown three ground ball double plays number eight nine and ten on the season. So if the Reds have what thirty four or thirty five of them on the year. Almost a third of those have gone to Arroyo. He likes that too. That little sinking fastball he throws. Bouncer down to Harrison two away. Hey, don't forget this week on Fox Saturday Baseball, interleague plays in full swing as Ryan Howard and the defending World Series champion Phillies make their first trip to the new Yankee Stadium to take on Derek Jeter and the Yankees. Fox Saturday Baseball returns this week at four on Fox. We've got interleague play right here, of course. There's a beautiful view of the Ohio River that will be the site of a very pleasant weekend of Memorial Day celebrations around the tri state area. And after tonight's ball game, there'll be some fireworks falling into the river, too. Spectacular fireworks on this Memorial Day weekend. Two away, and here's Cabrera. The Struble fly it out. Bounced into a double play and bounced to second. Center field hit pretty good. Back warning track. Tavares got it. One, two, three for Bronson. The Reds going to work. Lance Nix will lead it off in a 1 1 ball game, bottom of eight. Ben Francisco in the third. And after a ground ball ended the inning, Chris, that could have produced a run. Could have been a whole different story in that third inning. Exactly right, George. But as it stands now, we're knotted at one. The Reds have a chance to do some damage here as we go to the late innings. And it looks like Dusty Baker's going to his bench to get some newly obtained power. Well, here's Johnny Gomes will have his first official at bat for the Reds. He was with the Reds in spring training, had a outstanding spring training early, tailed off at the end, did not win the final spot on the roster, but down in Louisville for Rick Sweet, had nine homers, 27 knocked in. He's got home run power. There's a shot. It's a fair ball. Rounding first, going to second. It'll be picked off the warning track and into second. How about that? One pitch, one swing, and he's won the fans over. They're on their feet, 28,000 plus at Great American Ballpark. Well, those of us that have seen him play a lot in spring training, George, you know that he's up there to swing the bat, not up there to walk or to to work yourself into a certain hitting situation. He sees something he likes and he's going to rip at it. And that ball went right off the tip of the glove of the third baseman Carroll down there. He's getting an ovation. Enjoy it, Johnny. His first at bat, first pitch is a productive one as Chris Dickerson will run for him. Dickerson represents the potential go ahead run here in the bottom of the eighth. You heard from him earlier. Boy, he was a happy guy to be in the Reds' clubhouse. Saying, I'm just going to come up, try to contribute, as he did for Rick Sweet down at AAA. So, a runner at second, nobody out, and here's Ramon Hernandez. Ramon already is contributed in situations like this. He has two sacrifice bunts, and he's showing bunt here. That's up high for a ball. If the Red should take a lead, Coco Cordero up and loosening in the bullpen for Cincinnati. Dickerson, great speed off second. The shortstop, Peralta trying to keep him close. Swinging away and fouling it off. One ball, one strike. Yeah, that's not a bad play at all, especially for a guy like Ramon Hernandez, who is so adept at hitting the ball the other way. If you sacrifice him to third, you're giving up an out. And the Reds have shown themselves to be so pathetic recently with runners in scoring position that, hey, you got one of your better run producers up there right now with a chance of getting not only get him over to third, but also to, to drive him in perhaps with a base hit to right field. You go ahead and take a shot at it. Breaking ball drops in there for a strike, and it's one and two. And that is a tough pitch to try to hit the other way right there. This Down is what Misty Baker likes about this particular 
setup is that you've got 11 hits to center, 14 to right. Dickerson off second. That's a line error right at the shortstop, and Dickerson back quickly to second. A hard breaking ball right there by Aaron Laffey. It comes right in on the hands of Ramon Hernandez. And you know, as a hitter, you're thinking right field. As soon as you think about right field and then get a little slider in on the hands, there's nothing you can do about it. You're going to get jammed and jammed good. And every strike that he threw is down and in. So he won the battle. The Reds unable to move the runner to third. Now one out. Here's Rosales. Right field down the line, curving into the corner. It'll go fouling into the seats. Get them on, get them over, get them in. The Reds have gotten them on tonight. They've gotten them over, but they've stranded nine to this point. With well, runners in scoring position after that line drive to short, they're now 0 for 8 on the night. It's a rocket shot in the left. That's going to get the run in. Rosales has delivered. He rounds first, goes to second. Listen to them salute Rosales. That looks like the same pitch that he got Ramon Hernandez out on. It either a cut fastball or a hard slider. But this time... Adam Rosales was ready for it. He drops the head. He's happy with himself, and the Reds get the lead. Now, two guys who started the year at AAA for Rick Sweet have delivered here in the eighth. Gomes, a pinch hit, two base hit, and Rosales, a double, and the Reds have taken a two to one lead. And out comes Carl Willis to talk to his left hander. Short, crisp, Quick swing and boy did it produce for Adam Rosales. So Rosales is on for the third time. He popped out, walked twice in this double. Another look at Adam Rosales swing. And yeah, he's a good fastball hitter and he gets one right here that just doesn't get inside enough. Victor Martinez and Aaron Laffey both wanted that ball really to drop on the back right foot of the right handed hitter get way in there. And when you miss over the plate, you risk the danger of a hard hit ball. And in that case, it drives in the go ahead run. And now, pretty good hole on the right side of the infield with the second baseman, Cabrera, only about 10 feet from the bag. Here's Gonzalez, who got the Reds' first hit back in the second, and then he doubled in the sixth. He's two for three. Trying to go that way, fouls it off. Two runs, four hits for the Reds. One run, five hits for the Indians. And Martinez is calling out Eric Wedge. I don't know whether Laffey felt something or something went wrong. He's kind of gimping as he goes back to the top of the mound. And he's holding his right side, Chris. And for a left-handed thrower, that's a muscle pull. Is the Area. dreaded oblique. Yep. And we have seen more oblique injuries, George, oh, in the boy. last couple of years than you know Nick Massett right now. He's on the disabled list with an oblique pull. I can tell you that in my career, I, I blew two of them out. And oh, look at him go down it's right where there. You take, it's where you put so much torque on your upper body, those muscles that are right around your rib cage. It's so easy to pull those off the muscle because you're trying to get so much torque and power towards the plate. And the problem with that is that every time you sneeze, cough, laugh, or take a deep breath for the next few days, you're going to feel like you're re-injured. What a shame. That young man has been outstanding in the bullpen. But he'll exit this game. And by the way, you talked about Nick Massett. Nick threw on the side today. Felt great. Their work with the Indians. Here's Aquino who will come in and take over. Greg Aquino, the new pitcher. Aquino, from the right-hand side, it's Aquino, Herges, Viscaino, Lewis and Betancourt and Kerry Wood the closer. Laffey is the lone left-hander they have in their bullpen. And Greg takes over. 
Oh, he was signed to a minor league contract by the Indians. He's this is his sixth year in the major leagues. When he first broke in as a rookie, he was a closer for a part of the time with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Converted 16 of 19. And has not done much in the way of saving games since. Been mostly a middle reliever in his big league time. Short lead for Rosales with Cabrera right next to him on the second base bag. That's a shot. Rosales had to hold. He's rounding third. They're going to send him. Here comes. There's going to be no throw and he'll score easily. I don't know what Ben Francisco was thinking. He faked the throw. Rosales had slowed up, expected to be held, and when he double pumped, Mark Berry gave him the go sign. So it ends up being a run scoring hit for Gonzalez. The Reds lead it three to one. I don't know why he just doesn't come up firing it right away. What, what are you going to lose right there? Are you worried about that third run getting to second base? Well, the Reds get the break on that. Rosales delivers a big hit. Gonzalez delivers a hit. The Reds lead it three to one. And here comes Michael Owings, who will pinch hit for Bronson Arroyo, who will exit with at least a three to one lead. Well, what is that? That's a nice run to bring in there. Boy. And you can't call it a gift run, but it's a run that, from an Indian standpoint, should not have scored. Rosales was prepared to stay at third because he had to wait to see if the ball was going to be caught. The Reds will take the run. Gonzalez is down at first, and here comes Owings. Micah pinch hitting tonight. Fastball up and in. Owings steps out, takes a look at Mark Berry, or rolls through some signs for him. Yeah, which she's probably getting the hit sign. Mm hmm. He is not up there to take, or nor is he up there to hit and run. He comes in at 304. A homer, four knocked in. Anything that he sees straight, he's going to hop all over. Reds at the top of the dugout steps with a rally here in the eighth inning. Ball and a strike. Takes a little off way out in front is Owings. Micah, one of a host of Reds players today at the season ticket holders luncheon. Dusty Baker was there, Michael Owings, Lance Nix, Arthur Rhodes, Ramon Hernandez, and Tommy Helm stopped by. Good to see Tommy today. Mike is saying, I don't care whether I hit or I pitch, I just want to help this team any way I can. Got a chance to do it here. This time, breaking ball gets him. Well, Aquino gets a strikeout. That's the second out of the inning. And back to the top of the order, Willie Tavares. Tavares tonight walked in the first. Eventually scored on a sacrifice fly by Brandon Phillips for the Reds' first run that tied the game one to one in the bottom of the first. After Grady Sizemore Homer had given the Indians a one nothing lead in the top of the first. And Tavares popped out, grounded out, and struck out his other three plate appearances. I hopper to short. The flip to second will get there in time, but the Reds do some business. Johnny Gomes' first plate appearance productive. A double, and then a double by Rosales. A single by Gonzalez, the Reds lead it. It's called 513381 Reds or go to Reds.com. Hey, I saw those today, George. They are very They are cool. pretty neat. They yeah, are pretty they neat. They are nice. That's Sunday. Hope you join us. Well, here's Coco. Reds have a lead three to one. He's going to try to close it out as we go to the top of nine, Chris. Pretty Cord good numbers. Cordero has got pretty good numbers. You're right. Earned run average, very nice. But how about the save and save opportunities? He is 10 for 10, Cordero is. And if you look at his career record against the Indians, he has never blown a save opportunity against the Tribe. A perfect 13 for 13. Well, if you look at the numbers going into interleague play, the Reds and Major League Baseball leading after eight innings are 20 and 0. Detroit, the Dodgers, the only ones ahead of them.
Well, Coco's trying to close it out here. And he'll face the only guy that's been able to put a marker up for the Indians tonight, Grady Sizemore. Sizemore homered off Bronson Arroyo. Single off him, fly it out. And here we are in the ninth. And your report card on Bronson Arroyo today, Chris, has to be pretty good. It absolutely is, George. You know, he pitched a pretty good ball game his last time out. He gave up two runs in the first inning against Jake Peavy and the Padres. Ended up losing that ball game because a superlative effort by the Padres pitcher. But tonight, one inning. Five hits overall, and it was kind of a weird game. He had to really work to keep his concentration tonight. 28,000 plus booing on what they thought was a strike three. The numbers for Grady against Coco, one for six in his career. Victor Martinez to follow, and then Chu, and timeout asked for as a Ball comes on the field in the left field. Final Detroit beat the Rockies four to three. Mets are leading the Red Sox five to three in the eighth. Philadelphia leads the Yankees seven to three in the ninth. Minnesota leads Milwaukee nine to one in the fifth. The White Sox lead Pittsburgh one nothing in the seventh inning. Going into play tonight, the Reds trail Milwaukee by four and a half games in the Central Division. Well, if it stays the way it is, the Reds win, the Brewers lose, they can pick up the game down to three and a half. That's a call strike three. Well, Bronson Arroyo gave Grady Sizemore a little bit to hit his first couple of times up, a home run and a single, not that's way with Francisco Cordero that sinking fastball dropping right at the knees 24 consecutive save chances for that guy dating back to last year he's in second place in the league with those 10 saves one behind the league leaders and in the bigger picture Chris a guy that you and I both know he's Coming in, number 31 on the all time list with 221 saves. He's one behind Sparky Lyle. 222 saves for Sparky. Big names on that list, huh? Martinez in his career, two for seven against Cordero. start against David Huff. Reds live at 6:30. And Sunday, Johnny Cueto against Cliff Lee, last year's Cy Young Award winner in the American League, who's been pitching great of late for the Indians. That should be a Danny matchup. But boy, did he flinch on that? That's a strike two call. <laughs> He's looking. I say, where did you come up with that pitch? <laughs> Two two. In the seventh now, Tampa Bay leads Florida thirteen to one. Texas five, Houston nothing in the sixth. Orioles and Washington two two. They're now in the tenth. Toronto and Atlanta scoreless in the sixth. Cardinals lead Kansas City two nothing in the sixth inning. Those are all the games underway in Italy play. Bouncer back over second. Gonzalez has it. Got him. Well, it's been a night for maybe a lack of offense for eight innings until the bottom of the eighth, Chris, but there's some outstanding defense. Well, tonight. it's a one man show for the Reds tonight. Alex Gonzalez has three hits, 60% of the Reds' hits, and he's made a bunch of double play balls and some other great defensive plays. You know, the thing about Gonzalez is that he keeps his balance. His feet move so fast that he's able to keep his body under balance as he goes a long way, a turn, and makes the throw. That's why he's accurate with those throws. 
Fans will take you through this at bat. Shin Su Chu tonight 0 for 3. Two away in the ninth. The Reds lead it 3 to 1. Cordero against Chu. Twenty-eight thousand and nineteen, the first of his big weekend series in the battle for the Ohio Cup against the Indians. And for most of those Reds fans, a battle that includes closing ground on the Milwaukee Brewers in the Central. Two strikes. Yes, sir, e. Coco. Eleven saves on the year. He backs up an outstanding performance by Bronson Arroyo and Dusty Baker, and the Reds have taken game one of this three-game series against the Indians. A night that started off in struggling fashion ends with a smiling scoreboard. Chris. That was a nice crowd tonight, George.